Website Evaluation from Spokane Community College Library, updated January 2014. Whenever we need to find information for college or work or anything in life, it's important to use credible, trustworthy information sources. I'm Janine Odlovac, one of the SCC librarians. In this video, I'll explain the www method of evaluating websites. Deciding if information on a website is appropriate for college or professional research can be hard. It's true we find credible, high-quality information on the Internet, but we'll also find information that's incomplete or inaccurate. Just because information is there and easy to find doesn't mean it's good information. So how can we make that decision? In comparison to other types of information sources, it's harder to evaluate the credibility of websites. Books and periodicals may be published by reputable publishing companies, have editors, fact checkers, and may be reviewed by experts before publication. The majority of websites have no editor or review process to verify the accuracy or content of the site. On the web, anyone can write whatever they want. By the way, right now we're talking about websites which you find on the free internet, not library databases. Let me show you an easy to remember evaluation technique. At our library, we teach students to use what we call the WWW test, which simply means to always evaluate each information source, including websites, by asking the questions who, what, and when. Each time we consider using an information source for research, we need to ask who created the information, what is the content, and when was it created? Who refers to what we call authority. In general, we should only use information created by experts who have authority. An expert can be an individual person or it can be a group. For example, if we're researching a medical topic, we want to find information created by a doctor, nurse, or other medical professional. Acceptable group authors would likely be a U.S. government agency like the Centers for Disease Control, a website from a college or a university like UW Department of Medicine, or a hospital like the Mayo Clinic. The top-level domain of the website's URL or Internet address gives us a clue to the site's origin. The top-level domain is the .com, .edu, .gov, or similar portion of the URL. In most cases, sites with the restricted domain .gov are from a government entity from the United States. It can be a local, state, or federal government office or agency. .edu sites come from colleges and universities. The other domains we commonly see, like .org and .com, are not restricted to use by a particular type of group, so can come from anywhere and anyone. While this knowledge gives us a clue about where a site comes from, we shouldn't make assumptions about the quality of a website based only on the top-level domain. We need to evaluate every website every time. The second question we need to ask is what? We'll need to look at the content of a site to decide if it gives balanced views and is of high quality. We'll consider things like the audience. Who is the intended audience for the information? Is it for the general public or students or professionals studying or working in a particular field? Objectivity. We usually want information which is objective, which gives both sides of a controversial issue in a balanced way without making a judgment. Scan the information, including any About Us links, to see if you detect obvious bias. Determining objectivity or bias can be difficult, so ask for help if you're unsure. Quality. As best you can, try to determine the accuracy of the information. If it contradicts what you've read in other expert sources, that should be a sign that something may be wrong with the site's content. And sources. 
we should hold websites to the same standards of documentation as books and journal articles. Look to see if the sources of facts and statistics are given in a reference list or bibliography. The last W reminds us to think of timeliness and ask when a website's information was created. Is it appropriately current for what you need? Check to see if the website has a date. This may be a date the web page or the information on the page was published, created, updated, or just a copyright date. Sometimes websites have articles that are individually dated. If these dates are current, you have a clue that the site is maintained and updated on a regular basis. If the only date you find is today's date, it's probably an automatic programmed date, so don't assume the information was updated today. If you can't find a date at all, consider not using the website as an information source for your research. Finally, keep in mind that evaluating websites isn't a beauty contest. Avoid the temptation to automatically think a site is credible because it looks good or there's a lot of information. The opposite is just as true. There are a lot of great sites that aren't flashy or visually appealing. The real beauty of a website is how well it meets our evaluation criteria and the quality of the information it provides. Let's review. When we look for information for school or professional research, it's crucial to evaluate the information. To evaluate, use the WWW test by asking who, what, and when. The more you do this, the better and faster you'll get at evaluating. Deciding if an information source is credible can be hard, so don't hesitate to ask your instructor or a librarian for help. You can get research help any time of the day or night from the SEC Library homepage. Just click on Ask a Librarian 24-7 to chat with a live librarian 24-7. Also, during library open hours, you can get librarian help via phone, email, or by visiting the SEC Library. You've just completed website evaluation from the Spokane Community College Library. Librarians are standing by to help you with all your information needs. You can contact us at 509-533-8821 or toll-free at 1-800-248-5644, extension 8821. Our email address is reference at scc.spokane.edu and our website is at www.scc.spokane.edu slash library. This tutorial was updated January 2014 and was created by Spokane Community College Library.